In today's video, we are going to be talking about Active Directory structure. If you watched our previous video, we did slightly touch on the subject, but in this video, I wanted to get a little bit more in depth with you guys so that we can actually kind of uh, simulate what an Active Directory structure might look like with somewhat of a, a real world type of business. That way you can kind of visualize, you know, what your directory looks like versus what your actual physical environment looks like. And when we say what our actual physical environment looks like, this means where our actual departments lie in that organization. So if you walk into a building, you might run across you know, a secretary's desk, and then you might have a bunch of other offices in that building. So you might have like your um, HR office, you might have a sales office, you might have an IT office. Now let's simulate this in Active Directory and talk about this so that way, hopefully, uh, when you are going through Active Directory or stepping into an environment, you can also visualize your structure in Active Directory, and then you can kind of relate that directly to the physical setup in that environment. So let's jump right over to our Active Directory screen. If you guys haven't pulled this up, go ahead and spin up your server and uh, go ahead and open up Active Directory users and computers. Now, in our last video, we talked about keeping our Active Directory structure very minimal. We only want a few uh, different OU folders in our structure because it makes things a little bit easier to manage in group policy. However, there's been plenty of environments that I've stepped into that have had many, you know, sub OUs and it's maybe a little bit more difficult to uh, organize. It's maybe a little bit different or, or difficult to um, really have a good stranglehold, I guess, um, on that structure, especially when you're utilizing group policy, but it's still doable. We can still do it. It's just you know, we have to maybe jump a few extra steps to do uh, some different things in group policy, but that's, it's not that big of a deal. So let's create our new structure here. And we're gonna be utilizing a new business. So what we're gonna do, I'll put business here on the screen. We got business. And now what we're gonna do in Active Directory is go ahead and create a new OU, organizational unit, right under itcq.local. So right under your domain, we're gonna go ahead and create a new OU and we're just gonna call this OU underscore production. So if we, the reason why I put underscore and this is like a hierarchy thing with, uh, with folders and stuff especially, um, you, will, you guys are gonna notice that uh, anything that has uh, an underscore in front of it is listed first in a directory. And that's the same thing here with Active Directory. If we put an underscore there, it's gonna be the first thing listed right under itcq.local after we did a right click and refreshed on our domain there. So now we have production. So let's say for instance that our business is uh, located in the Sears Tower or if you're you know, new here, it's the Willis Tower, but it will always be the Sears Tower to me. It's in Chicago. It was one of the largest buildings in the world for a really long time, uh, not anymore, but it's still a, a, a landmark, if you will, in Chicago, where I'm from. At our business in the Sears Tower, we actually have two floors. We rented out two floors for our business, and we're gonna say that we do like sales and engineering or something. So what we're gonna do is put on here our first floor and our second floor. So we know we have two floors to manage. In Active Directory now, we could actually go under production and we're going to right click and we are going to create a new OU. And if you know what that new OU is gonna be, good for you, it's gonna be first floor. And then we're gonna create a second OU and you should probably know what that is because it's the second floor. So now in Active Directory, you have it structured out for our first floor and second floor, because again, we're renting out two floors in the Sears Tower. So now we can visualize in Active Directory, okay, well, we got our first floor and second floor. Well, what departments do we have, right? So for the sake of this video, I'm gonna go ahead and list our departments here. We have HR, which is human resources. We have IT, we have sales, and we have support and we have our management or our VPs. So we have HR, IT, sales, support, and our VPs in our organization. So what we can do in Active Directory is actually create OUs for all of these departments. So what we're gonna do is say, okay, our HR department could be on our first floor. Now this is obviously going to make sense when you actually have your physical structure laid out ahead of you. 
So we're kind of making this up as we go. And we're saying that our HR department uh, is on the first floor. So we're gonna create a new OU under our first floor and call it HR. We also know that on our first floor, we have our VPs. So we can put VPs or VP, or you could put management. Let's just put management because the same thing. And now we can say on our second floor, well, that's where our sales team is. So we could put sales. And with our sales team, of course, it's probably a good idea to have our support team because your support team will often be working with our sales team. So we could put on here support. And then of course, on our second floor, you probably wanna have your IT team kind of close to everybody else so they can help them. So we're gonna put IT. So now we have our structure laid out ahead of us. We have on our first floor, we have HR, we have management on our first floor. On our second floor, we have sales, support, and IT. So this, if you visualize, if we walked into the Sears Tower and we went to the floor where we're renting out space, as soon as we get to our first floor of our business, we know that we're gonna find our HR department there and we're gonna find our management department there. Now, we did mention before, we might have um, you know, a, a secretary desk. So on our first floor, we can actually even put a new OU for um, our secretary. Um, we could call this um, uh, reception. So there we go. Now we have our full structure laid out ahead of us. And now what we can do is actually start putting our users into these different OUs, into these different departments. So we can go down to our users and we can drill down in here and we can say, all right, well, uh, this Bailey, Barbara, Barry, and Barrett, they're all part of our HR team. So what we can do, we can highlight all of them. I'm just holding down control and clicking on all of them. And I'm just gonna drag them over to HR and we're gonna hit yes. So when we go under production, we have no users. When we go under first floor, we have no users. But when we go under HR, we have our users that we just moved there. So that's kind of a way that you can move your users around. We can try to um, simulate this process, right? So let's go back to users and let's say, oh, uh, Grant, um, <laughs> there's a lot of crazy names here, Casey, uh, and Kareem, they are all part of management. So we can move them over to management. So now under first floor, we have uh, HR, we have our users in HR, and we have our users in management. Now we can keep repeating this process and we can start moving all of our users to the correct departments. Now, why we do this, why we have it structured this way. There's many things that we can do with group policy. And I know we haven't gotten to group policy yet, um, but it's a very important piece of our entire puzzle here. In future videos, we will be covering group policy. So all of this makes a little bit more sense, but I can kind of give you a scenario here that hopefully you can understand just by me explaining it to you. With our hierarchy of our folders here in production, we could push out a group policy and group policy is something that really helps manage not only our users, but it can help manage our groups, it can help manage settings within um, our environment. So with production, let's say for instance, we had a specific uh, wallpaper that we wanted to push out. And this is actually very uh, uh, prevalent uh, throughout the industry. We might have just a specific wallpaper that we push out to every single computer in our environment. So under production, we could actually create a group policy that pushes out a specific wallpaper to all of our users under production. So anybody who's on the first floor in HR management reception, they'll all receive the same wallpaper and the same with the second floor. But let's say for instance, well, our IT team, since you know IT can essentially do not whatever they want, but they can do whatever they want sometimes with um, the way that we uh, push things out or the, the settings that we have, IT, is completely a separate beast from everybody else. But we still wanna have the same group policy settings pushed down to us, but we can also modify that. So as we said, we have this wallpaper pushed down to everybody. Well, I could just go to IT in group policy and push out a specific wallpaper to the IT team. So every other uh, department will get a standard wallpaper pushed out, but IT could have a separate wallpaper pushed out. Now this was just a really 
brief basic example of how hierarchy and group policy and Active Directory work together. As we get into the videos, it'll definitely make more sense uh, because we will be pushing out different group policies for different OUs and different users and different security groups and such. So it's gonna be really exciting once we get to that point, but I just kind of wanted to uh, explain this process to you guys in a way that we could kind of uh, simulate it and visualize a physical environment and how our Active Directory uh, structure is put into place. So I hope this video made sense to you guys. Uh, if it didn't, please leave a comment below. If there's something that you feel like I missed, definitely leave that in the comments. I want to hear from you guys on what we could do better to improve the, the videos that we put out on here. So thank you guys so much for watching. As always, take it easy.